TV KPM. For this, uh, we will start with our segment with uh, data description. Okay, great. Okay. So over to you. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay. So students, before we continue with our first chapter, let us see few points first. <clears throat> okay, all the students, please take note of the following aspects. <clears throat> okay, aspect one. Numerical final answer must be given correct to three to five significant figures unless stated otherwise in the questions. So you must be very careful that Anything less than three, more than five, consider wrong. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next important point is, during our discussion throughout the session, every step that being emphasized must be shown in your working. Otherwise, mark will be deducted. Ah. I will be using example to demonstrate this. Okay. Next one. Able to define certain statistic terminology based on the context of the question. Sean, okay? Okay, okay so far. Okay. Yeah. Let us continue with the first chapter. Okay, in this chapter, data description, we have two subtopics. One is group data, another one is ungrouped data. For these two parts, okay, what you have to know is you should be able to you should be able to calculate measure of central tendency and measure of dispersion and use, use, use correct formula <clears throat> and able to use algebraic operation on both MOCT and MOD. Next part, you have to calculate standard deviation and mean by using sum of x minus a and sum of x minus a squared and <coughs> uh, calculate combined mean and standard deviation, calculate combined mean and standard deviation for at least combination of two or three set of data. All right. Next, you have to construct and interpret stem plot, box plot, histogram, and cumulative frequency curve. Last part of the chapter, you should be able to describe the best way to describe the distribution of a data whether it is a symmetry, positively skewed, or negatively skewed. For this, you can use five ways. One, using MOCT. Next, you can use quartiles. The third one, you can use box plot. The next one, you can use histogram. Or the lastly, you can use Pearson coefficient of skewness. Okay, well, students, <coughs> for group data, the major mistake found among the students, okay? So in group data, if you notice that, <coughs> so if you notice here for the table one, mm -hmm. the value from 74 to 75, there is a gap here. Yes. Whereas for year to year, no gap, if you notice here. So from this, we, you should know that the 70 actually shows you, and the 29 year, the 70 shows you class limits, whereas the 29 shows you class boundaries. So this too is very important because if you do mistake here, then your MOCT and MOD will be totally wrong. Okay. Okay. For example, we take for this thing particularly. If you notice here, Sean, yep. you can see here thousand. Mm -hmm. So this one, student usually assume as seventy. It's ah. actually seventy thousand. I see. Okay. Okay. Whereas here, if you notice, this is in hundred cm. Okay. So that means this one actually shows you 2900. Aha, all right. <clears throat> so what happened is here, if you see clearly, the class interval for this one, students tend to write 5 because they can find the class interval here is 5. Yes. But actually what is the answer is, John? 5000. 5000. Okay. So this one small mistake, mm -hmm. you can end up doing mistake for all your calculation. Oh, no. So same thing goes here. Okay. So if you notice here, the class interval here also is five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. But student will tend to write five, but must careful that this is in hundred cm. So your class interval will be five hundred. I see. So this is very common mistake among students. Okay. Okay. Must be. <coughs> okay. We continue with one example. Okay. Okay. Which I will emphasize certain things. Okay. Let us see one example. Okay. 
the mass in kilogram of 25 student is given in the table here. <coughs> okay. So your first task is determine the first, second, third quartiles. Mm -hmm. Carefully. First, second, third quartile ends. You must be very careful the word ends. That means you want to comment the skewness, you must use these three values. You cannot use anything else. You cannot use MOCT or you cannot use box slot. Okay. You must use the three values. Okay, comment on the distribution. And then B, state the suitable measure of central tendency and give reason. Okay, so if you notice, so first we have to find the three quartiles. Mm -hmm. Then we have to comment. Okay. Then we have to determine the suitable measure of central tendency. And then we have to give reason. All Let right. us check the working. So before you can do the first part, you have to rearrange your data. You have to rearrange your data. Okay, after you rearrange your data, your Q1 will be seventh observation, which is equal to 43. Your Q2 supposed to be equal to 13th observation, which is equal to 55. Okay. And then your Q3 is equal to 19th observation, which is equal to 62. That means each one you will get one mark. Okay. Okay. The most important is your indication here. Ah, so you're yes. using Q1 is equal to 43. Maybe some student wondering, what happens sir, if I use small Q? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's acceptable. Okay. Okay. <coughs> then we continue. So the next portion of the question, the next task, they ask you to comment on the distribution. Okay. So since we are finding these uh, quartiles, so we need to find a different between the quartile first. Okay. We need to find different between quartile. That means Q2 minus Q1, mm -hmm. Q3 minus Q2, you find, you show your working, you get 12 and 7 here. Yeah. Okay, you get 12 and 7 here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have to do comparison. Okay. You have to do comparison. That means you do comparison that Q2 minus Q1 is greater than Q3 minus Q2. You do comparison. But what happens if you don't do this sentence uh, or this uh, line here in particular? If let's say you never do this, Okay, and mm -hmm. then you never do comparison, you straight go for your answer. Let's say, Shona, see okay. first. Huh? So your answer will be negatively skewed distribution. Mm -hmm. If, let's say, the student never write this, they only do these two, okay. then mark will be deducted. Mark oh. will be deducted. Okay. okay. If, let's say, they never do this, never do this, never do this, yes. they straightforward give you correct answer, negatively skewed. Okay. That means mark will be zero. Ah, I see. So okay. the working is more important. Okay. The method of obtaining your answer, mm -hmm. give with the reason. All right. Okay, and looks like, oh, but I have I do have one more question over here. Yes, For sir. example here, the data has negatively skewed uh, distribution. But what happens if we do not include that word negatively over there? Okay, so if you notice here. I'll just tap on the screen. <clears throat> okay, if you notice here, Sean. Yes. The statement will be the data as negatively skewed distribution. Yes. But the most important word here is negatively skewed distribution. Yeah. If you fail to write the word negatively, mark mm -hmm. will be deducted. That ah. means this one will be wrong. Even okay. though your working year is correct, mm -hmm. but this will be wrong. Because Q means we got two types of skewness. Yeah. One is positively skewed, mm -hmm. another one is negatively skewed. Okay. So if you never write the word negatively, it might be positively skewed. I see. Okay. So, so that would be the wrong answer for yes. that. Now, what about this statement over here? The data has negatively skewed distribution. So, if let's say I do not put the word negatively over there, can that be accepted? Sean, you listen carefully. Yeah. Okay. We got two types of skewed distribution. Yes. One is positively skewed, another one is negatively skewed. What okay. happens if you never put the word negatively mean? It might be positive also. I see. Uh, that's why if the word negative there is very important. Mm -hmm. So, your answer must be negatively skewed distribution. Okay. Okay. Shall I continue, Shan? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So, in next part, they ask you what is the suitable measure of central tendency. So, based on our answer here, actually, we know already. Once it's a skewed distribution, mm -hmm. the best measure of central tendency is median. Okay. Okay. Median. Maybe some student will write mode. It's acceptable. Okay. But median is the much more better. Okay. Then we continue. They ask you to give a reason. So the reason here is very clear. You can write the data as negatively skewed distribution. Okay. Which means, if you never write, uh, let's say you never write here negatively skewed, 
Okay, for this particular part, if you write just Q distribution, it's good enough already. I see. Uh, because the skew here it shows that you must use median. Whether it's positively skew or negatively skew, you must use uh, median as a measure of central tendency. DD TV KPM.